Good morning, everybody. It has been a long time for my family, but we're glad to be back. So hopefully you will all enjoy singing our first hymn. It's hymn number 30, 339, The Solid Rock. It'll be up there on the screen. So if you're ready and able, let's stand as we sing. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is when darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. us this morning. Um, it appears that we no longer have chairs in the room, but ice cube trays uh, <laughs> instead. Uh, so for in-person folks, uh, you've braved the cold to get out here, and I'm, uh, I'm very thankful for that. So thanks, thanks for being here. If you're in person and uh, live stream, good morning. If you're joining us live stream, I want to say thanks to you as well for joining us and spending time with us instead of the billions of other things on the internet that you could be doing uh, right now. Uh, instead, you're, you're here to, uh, to worship with us, and I'm, I'm glad that you're, you're there. So um, we, uh, we don't have many announcements for this morning, really only um, one thing that I can remember. I've probably forgotten stuff, but we're just going to move past that and not uh, not even think about that. But um, so today is um, we, we join with um, the other churches that will be recognizing it as well of Sanctity of Life Sunday. Uh, I forgot to mention this in the weeks leading up to that, leading up to today. I'm going to blame it on let's see uh, the weather, uh, COVID. Uh, just life, uh, you know. So anyway, so I, I apologize for that. Uh, we usually uh, just mention that if you want to uh, give a financial gift towards Haven, then you can do that. Uh, I've talked with Haven exclusive, extensively about this. They will take money whenever. Uh, it doesn't have to be this week. So uh, if you would like to do that and you can do it today, uh, just be sure to mark for uh, mark it as it's for Haven. Put it in the box in the back. If you want to get to it later on down the line, we're not going to have any complaints, so it'll it'll be fine. Uh, so um, 
the Sanctity of Life uh, offering for Haven. If you want to do that, just mark it as Haven so Marilyn knows uh, what to do with it. Uh, all right, I think, uh, I think that's everything. I'm glad that we're able to be here today and, uh, and worship together again. And so let's, uh, let's pray, and then we'll get started with the service. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day, um, and uh, we're thankful that supposedly it's supposed to warm up uh, later today. Um, yeah, we're um, we're anxious for that and, and hopeful for that, Father, and uh, we just pray for continued safety for people dealing with the cold, but also um, with the storm coming up, uh, we just pray for safety for um, and for everybody that will be impacted by that. And, um, and Lord, uh, in, in the meantime, as we spend these few moments together, uh, we, we enter in uh, either in person or, or with the live stream, and we're, I'm sure, all distracted to some degree. There's so many things that are going on and so many things that are happening. Uh, focus, focus our mind for these, these brief few minutes as we as we worship and as we spend some time in your word, uh, Father, may you be glorified and may we be blessed uh, and help us as we just continue to try and, and be the church here in, in this region. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dennis. And good morning, live stream, and good morning to all of our friends and family here. Um, we're going to sing. We have a new song for you guys this morning, um, but before we get to that, we have another familiar one. Um, just so that you know, if you guys ever want to know um, how to get in touch with the songs that we sing, please feel free to talk to myself or to Beth. Um, some other people in the band also know really well how you can access this music, but if you guys ever have these questions, please ask us. We'd love to direct you to help it. Because, um, I mean, you know, it's really fun when we all sing it together, so you got to learn it. <laughs> um, so would you guys please stand with us? We're going to go before the Lord in song.
All right, this is our new song we're singing for you this morning. It's called Always. Um, so it's a little bit, um, it, the melody's pretty simple. Please, as you guys feel comfortable, please join us in singing because it really is about singing together. I'm not just here to hear ourselves sing, right? <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for being here. My foes are many.
We're going to sing one more song. Generous for me, love's 
for singing with us. You may be seated. All right, thank you for singing. Our scripture reading this morning is actually going to be two portions of scripture, and uh, it's a little bit a little bit longer today, maybe. Uh, but if you didn't get it now, you'd get it later on. So we might as well just do it now. Um, so I'm going to begin with Psalm 42, and then we will hear from John chapter 1 as well. Psalm 42. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep. At the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By the day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is within me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. John 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He he was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Let's just have a moment of prayer. Father, uh, we, we come before you through Jesus, and uh, I think many of us could echo this Uh, This prayer in Psalm 42 from David about our souls, (laughs) our souls in turmoil. 
And we see how David walked through that. We, we see how he reminded himself, how you reminded him. And then we go into the Gospel of John and we, we hear this tremendous news, this tremendous truth about Jesus, your Son, our Savior. And we can see that there is hope. There is hope in this world. Father, help us with our own turmoils and our own souls and our own fears and anxieties and difficulties and all of the things that are chasing after us. And help us to be salt and light. To be a witness as John the Baptist was. Of Jesus. True hope. True life. Grace upon grace. Because of you. Because of Jesus. We can understand these things because of the Holy Spirit. God, you are God alone. And we come before you as simple people in need of grace. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for knowing us and knowing that which we go through. We say today, Father, full of hope, we are not alone in this place because you are with us. And that's a beautiful truth to hold on to in the midst of these days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to sing another song. Our final hymn this morning is hymn number 352, It Is Well With My Soul, and it's right there. Here we go. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to Oh
singing this morning. Uh, that was a great song, uh, the, It Is Well With My Soul. It's a beautiful song, and, and it's, uh, it's just devastating to know, uh, and, and encouraging to know the, the beauty that came out of the tragedy that, uh, that inspired that, that song. Um, today is not an academic study, okay? Today is like uh, you're sending a child off to camp or to college or something. Hey, you're going to need this, right? Uh, when, when I went off to college, my, my parents said, you're going to need this and need this and need this. I got into the room, and I didn't have enough space. I was like, ah! right? And so we started getting rid of stuff. Don't get rid of this. I, I, I believe this is important for us. We're not doing like a full-out academic study of these um, some of these passages and, and so forth, that's not the point for today. It is, I think this is necessary. I think this is helpful. I think we need it for where we are. It's been said that the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke show us the body of Jesus, and the Gospel of John shows us the soul of Jesus. And I find that balance to be beautiful and important and helpful when we think about the question that we asked last week, who has us? We need to really search for that answer because at some point in our lives, and let's be honest, more than once honestly, our soul is going to cry out. We are going to face things where uh, we don't have the answers. We have our fears and so forth, and, and our soul is going to cry out. King David wrote Psalm 42, which we had earlier for our scripture reading. David is not doing well when he wrote that psalm. As the deer pants for the water, you know the song. It sounds serene, doesn't it? Like, like you're just kind of coming up to a brook and beautiful deer and green grass, and it's beautiful and wonderful. Serene calmness. That's not what's going on. It's the exact opposite, actually. It's one of turmoil and of being chased by a predator. The water is a life-sustaining element. The deer is running from a predator and expending all of this energy, and it needs the water to live. If it's able to escape, if it doesn't get water, it will perish. But the water will also mask the scent of the deer from the predator, because as the deer is running and at high speeds and so forth, it begins to pant, which gives off more scent which lets the predator know where to chase. So if the deer can get to water, it will both have replenishment, but also it will mask the scent of the deer and hopefully hide the deer from the predator. The water replenishes, the water hides and protects the deer. David needs replenished. If you remember what he says after that famous first verse, he says, my tears have been my food day and night. My tears have been my food day and night. Why are you cast down, my soul? I feel forgotten. I am mourning. Turmoil. I am in turmoil, he says. He needs replenished, but he also needs to be protected and kept safe. He needs to be hidden from evil. Is, is anybody saying, this sounds really familiar? 
This sounds like like kind of what life is is becoming. He reminds himself and us because have you felt chased these last two years? Hope in God. Hope in God. Praise will happen again. He is my God and my salvation. This is what he's reminding himself of. And as we read through it in our circumstance, this is what we can hold on to as well. Hope in God. Praise is happening and praise will happen. He is our God. He is our salvation. It's an incredible incredible psalm and it takes me to John gospel of John chapters 13 through 17 and if you want to if you have a bible or a app or whatever however you're looking at the scriptures uh, you can start joining me there if you want to just listen in that's great as well chapter 13 gives the account of what we call the last supper you've seen some paintings of the last supper You've maybe seen some dramas of The Last Supper. Have you ever seen any of them that they kind of depict it as more of like this serene, calm kind of fun dinner? <laughs> right? That's not what was going on. Jesus and the disciples are in the upper room, and they are having that final meal before Jesus is arrested and crucified. It was not serene. It was not a peaceful meal. There is turmoil in the room. Remember, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, and that caused chaos. Jesus looks at Judas and says, you're going to betray me. He looks at Peter and says, you're going to deny me three times. There's all this other stuff that's going on. There's turmoil in the room. The disciples find themselves troubled. They have questions. They don't have answers. Someone has stated it well. The atmosphere in the large upstairs room was tense, unhappy, uncertain. What happens then in chapters 14 through 17 is, has been called the farewell discourse. The farewell discourse. And the same author that I just quoted sets the stage for us well by writing this. He says, perhaps one of the most amazing features of this farewell discourse is its beginning. It is Jesus who is going to the agony of the cross. It is Jesus who is troubled in spirit. Yet on this night, when of all nights it would have been appropriate for his disciples to encourage him, to support him, we discover that they can, only, they can see only their loss. Jesus, therefore, must encourage them. On the very night he is to taste death on their behalf, he speaks to their confused bewilderment, fickle faith, dim vision, self-absorption, and he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Isn't that an incredible opening line? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus shows his soul in the upper room. He serves, he confronts, he tells the truth, he encourages. I don't have it all laid out yet. I'm taking things on a week-by-week -week basis for the most part these days with sermon prep. March 2020. I had a pattern in which I would set the sermon schedule, and I would send it to Gail. Uh, and I would send her months in advance of what the sermons would be. Now it's like, well, what's next? I don't know. Will we even be in the building next week? I don't know. I'm not going to do all this stuff to get ahead. So I'm taking it week by week, folks. All right? Uh, and, and who knows when that might change or whatever. But right now, hold that very loosely. And the plan is we're going to spend several weeks in the farewell discourse. John chapters 14 through 17. So let's begin at the beginning of chapter 14. I'm going to read the first seven verses for us. Follow us along or listen as I read. And this is Jesus speaking. 
right after all of this craziness has ensued in the upper room, he's speaking to his disciples and he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. We're going to stop there. Today, as I mentioned earlier, we join Christians all over the country, possibly all over the world, recognizing Sanctity of Life Sunday, preciousness of life. And I don't think it's beyond the boundary of what is proper to look at this farewell discourse and final prayer of Jesus and say, God is all about life. He loves life. He wants life. He gives life. He is serious about life. His opening statement overflows with life. Don't let your hearts be troubled. And then he continues on. What I'm doing is about life with my Father. I am the way, the truth, the life. You're going to need help. The Holy Spirit is going to be with you and help you with life. Abide in me, the true vine. You will bear fruit. Love one another. Ask of your Father and you will receive. Your sorrow will turn to joy. You may have peace. I have overcome the world. Sanctify them. I want them with me where I am. This is Jesus speaking, and that is a half-second glimpse at chapters 14 through 17. But do you see life in that? It's life everywhere. What emerges for you when you hear this? When you hear Jesus speaking these words, what comes to mind? I hope part of it is life. I've come that you may have life, that you may have it abundantly. It's true what they say. You see Jesus' soul here. He's just washed their dirty feet. He's told them difficult news. The disciples are about to do a bunch of things that I'm sure they wept over many times. (coughs) Jesus knows what they're going to do. And yet he still looks at them and he says, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. We hate to be misunderstood, don't we? At least I do. I hate to be misunderstood. Falsely labeled something that we aren't? I can't stand that either. Accused of something grotesque? In this world, God is constantly misunderstood. Falsely labeled, accused endlessly. But here in this farewell discourse, those of us who are in Christ are connected with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we see who God is emerging and manifesting. The trials of this world, our failures, all the sad things, does that leave us panting for water? David said, He had soul thirst for God. That's another important question that comes up. What, who does our soul thirst for? We need to figure that out because that will help us to understand how our theology is being formed. We all have theology. Now, there's a way to understand that word in a very strict way of a system of beliefs and theories about God. I'm I'm using it in a sense in that way, but also expanding it of where everyone, all of us are theologians. And it's not just about like, like 
God, but it's, it's about life. Like, what do we believe about life? How should we live out life? We're constantly making these, these uh, judgments and assumptions and living out of this. We're, we're building theology constantly. And we're being influenced by others. Who influences our theology? Our thoughts about God, but our, our ways of living life as well. Who influences that? And if you really start to pay attention to it, you'll see it everywhere. You'll see it in the music you listen to. Any television shows that you watch. These days, any commercials that you watch. There's advertising everywhere. It's all over the place. And if you really start focusing on it, you'll, you'll see little things. Uh, we don't have YouTube, or we don't have TV. That's why I have a YouTube problem. Uh, I can't get away from commercials even on YouTube, right? They're all over the place. And I, I saw one yesterday. I'm looking in the, in the background of, of this ad that I could not skip. And there was just this little thing, this little thing that communicated so much. It was subtle, but it was there. And it was purposefully there. Everything that you see in the frame of a screen is purposefully there. Why? And how is it affecting us? We all have a theology. We all have beliefs about God and about life. And out of that <laughs> is how we live. Uh, Everyone here, I imagine, maybe not everybody uh, on the internet would know this. We have, we have three daughters. Our youngest one is not in the room, so I can talk about her. <laughs> Tutu has a theology about life. Eat all the candy. Yeah. Right? This is her theology. Eat all the candy. Get to movie time. They, they get a they get little, little bit of movie time each day. Eat the candy, get to movie time. That's her theology. There's a lot more to her, but candy is, is way up there. <laughs> right? Movies is way up there. Right? Chrissy and I have some different theology. And at times, religious war breaks out <laughs> because the theologies are crashing against one another. It's meant to be funny, but it's also meant to hopefully spur something in your own mind, in your own life. Hold on to this. John 14.1. Let not your hearts be troubled. In John 16, 33, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. Don't let your hearts be troubled. It's hard to build a theology on that statement right now. Isn't it? All the things that are going on. Well, what do you mean? There's some troubling things that are going on. How can we have this hope? How can we rest in this? How can we really keep going day after day after day after day after day and not give ourselves over to trouble? Before he goes into his final prayer, the last thing that Jesus says in his farewell discourse is, I have overcome the world. Hold on to that. We are placing our hope with someone or something. That thing for you, for me, for us, what is that thing doing in the world? I want to close our time today with a notice this with me. Notice this with me kind of uh, just a couple of minutes in the hopes that it sets us up well to look at the rest of this in the coming weeks. Uh, and it's all encapsulated with, with soul thirst and, and outlook. 
so um, if, you, if you have a Bible or somehow, some way, go back to the beginning of John 14. If you're just listening, just listen in again as I read the first, the first four verses, just to refresh our memory of what Jesus is saying here. So, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my, in my Father's house are many rooms. Some of the translations are going to have a different thing there. Some will say uh, mansions and, and so forth. If, um, if you use King James or grew up with King James uh, and it's just in you like it is, is for me at times, then, then mansions is, is going to be there. Um, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself and that where I am, you may also be. And you know the way to where I am going. That's uh, the beginning of, of Jesus' farewell um, discourse here. The notice this with me is, don't get distracted by, however your translation has it, the many rooms, the many mansions. Um, 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 uh, there's been songs written about this, and it moves it from like room and mansion to palace. Like We're all going to have a palace. Um, right? So... Don't get distracted by the many rooms, the mansions, or the palaces built for you in heaven. Uh, and and look, I know I ruin everything, okay? Um, don't, don't get distracted by that. Uh, someone has said, heaven is a large place. Its possibilities transcend your imagination and exceed your charity. If we get distracted by this and put all of our focus there on, I'm going to get a mansion, we're condensing heaven down to the scope of our imagination. And it's so much more than that. It's so much greater than that, right? So I say, don't go to the place of thinking about a structure with walls and doors and tile and, uh, you know, four and a half baths and... Uh, all of that kind of stuff. Don't, don't go to that place with it because that isn't where the disciples in the room went with what Jesus said. They heard Jesus, and they didn't ask to see the floor plans. They didn't ask, what's the square footage of my mansion? Right? They didn't ask, can I have riverfront property? Will I have a view of the throne? See, these aren't the questions that they're asking. And I don't believe, I could be wrong, it has happened a couple of times before. But I don't believe we will ever say to one another in heaven, we're, we're never going to visit one another and say, I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> you've decorated your mansion so well. Where did you get the curtains? We're not going to have those discussions. Thomas, it seems to me, is saying, Jesus, we don't know where you are going. How can we make sure that we're with you? You see where he goes with it. It's with the person of Jesus, not the square footage of a mansion. It's the person of Jesus. Philip, we didn't read it today. We'll get it to it later. Philip doesn't mention a building. He says, give us the Father. Give us God. In years past, we've been blessed to hear a simple song be sung inside of this building. Not all of you would have been here to have heard it. There's a student at Plymouth State. He's graduated now. Um, he would sing this song. Give me Jesus. And there's this one line that I think captures well. You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. That's what's going on here. You can have the mansion. You can have the tile. You can have all of that stuff. Give me Jesus. That's where the disciples go, even in all of their mess-ups. 
that's where they go. And I think that's what Jesus is saying to us. It's more about him as a person. Receiving him and, and having the Holy Spirit. We're going to see you later. Jesus, I'm leaving for a while. What? This is devastating news to the disciples. It's, it's necessary. It's actually good news. And you're not going to be left alone. You're going to have the Holy Spirit here to help you, to guide. And this is true for us today as well. Let the world be the world. Give us Jesus. Let us have Jesus. We need to drink that water. Pant for that water. Thirst for that water. I want to close by reading another psalm. Psalm 42 is dark. There's turmoil. There's chasing. We started there. We experienced that. I want to close with Psalm 103. And we're going to read it from a little, little bit of a different translation. If you're following along, hopefully it matches up okay. But this is another song from David. Oh, my soul, come, praise the eternal. With all that is in me, body, emotions, mind, and will, every part of who I am, praise his holy name. Oh, my soul, come, praise the eternal. Sing a song from a grateful heart. Sing and never forget all the good he has done. Despite all your many offenses, he forgives and releases you more than any doctor. He heals your diseases. He reaches deep into the pit to deliver you from death. He crowns you with unfailing love and compassion like a king. When your soul is famished and withering, he fills you with good and beautiful things, satisfying you as long as you live. He makes you strong like an eagle restoring your youth when people are crushed, wronged, enslaved, murdered. The eternal is just. He makes the wrongs right. He showed Moses his ways. He allowed his people Israel to see his wonders and acts of power. The eternal is compassionate and merciful. When we cross all the lines, he is patient with us. When we struggle against him, he lovingly stays with us, changing, convicting, prodding. <laughs> he will not constantly criticize, nor will he hold a grudge forever. Thankfully, God does not punish us for our sins and depravity as we deserve. In his mercy, he tempers justice with peace. Measure how high heaven is above the earth. God's wide, loving, kind heart is greater for those who revere him. You see... God takes all our crimes, our seemingly inexhaustible sins, and removes them as far as east is from the west. He removes them from us. An earthly father expresses love for his children. It is no different with our heavenly father. The eternal shows his love for those who revere him, for he knows what we are made of. He knows our frame is frail, and he remembers we came from dust. The children of Adam are like grass. Their days are few. They flourish for a time like flowers in a meadow. As the wind blows over the field and the bloom is gone, it doesn't take much to blow us out of the memory of that place. But the unfailing love of the eternal is always and eternal for those who reverently run after him. He extends his justice on and on to future generations to those who will keep his bond of love and remember to walk in the guidance of his commands. The eternal has established his throne up in the heavens. He rules over every seen and unseen realm and creature. Adore him. Give him praise, you heavenly messengers, you powerful creatures who listen and act on his every word. Give praise to the eternal, all armies of heaven, 
you servants who stand ready to do His will, give praise to the Eternal, all that He has made in all corners of His creation. O oh, my soul, come praise the Eternal. Let's pray. Father, help us to praise. Help us to be honest. Not to diminish the difficulty of this world, but also not to give in to it. I'm thankful for the Psalms and, and the, the realness that is in them. And I thank you for the Gospels and being able to open up the Gospel of John and to see the soul of Jesus, our Savior, your Son, and to see this, this beauty cover. Lord, we are frail. We are made of dust. <laughs> but we bear your image. And you love us. And I know that you haven't forgotten us, but I ask, remember us. And help us. Help us to praise and to adore and to share the goodness of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with us for our last song? Blessed be.
with us. Uh, that is not an easy song to sing all the time, is it? Blessed be the name of the Lord. May we be people who support each other in that. Um, that is what the church is for. Our closing scripture from this morning comes from Colossians 1, uh, verses 15 to 19, uh, 17. And he is the image of the invisible God, speaking of Jesus, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Live love this week, everybody. Thank you for being with us.